Good morning, wrestling fans. I am Lance Brock, and unfortunately, I have to start off with some sad news today, as reported yesterday, the passing of Sid Udi, better known to pro wrestling fans, of course, as Sid Vicious or Psycho Sid, Sid Justice, the great humongous, very early in his career in the Memphis Territory. It was posted by his son that he passed away after battling cancer at the age of 63 years old definitely very sad news which unfortunately seems like something we've been talking about quite a bit here lately on the podcast with the passings of Sika, Afa and Kevin Sullivan Sid was someone that I grew up watching when I was a kid. Both his time in WCW and when he jumped to WWF and became Sid Justice and then Psycho Sid and he returned to WCW and was there till just around the end, I believe, of WCW. But definitely remember a lot of things of Sid Vicious. One thing I remember is in the war games and power bombing Brian Pillman just destroying him in the War Games match and Ellie Ganti had to come out and carry promo or carry Pillman out of the ring and this is was a wasn't really a big news story at that time, but it came out and there was an incident with him and Arn Anderson where they stabbed each other with scissors. And his time in WWF, I remember the time he destroyed the barber shop set and one of his most famous times was actually the Royal Rumble 1992 he was down to the end where he eliminated Hulk Hogan because when he was Sid Justice him and Hogan were friends and Hogan after Sid eliminated him, Hogan is actually, he does the heel thing here and grabs on to Sid's arm and kind of starts to pull him over the top rope a little bit, allowing Ric Flair to come from behind him and throw him over the top and win that famous Royal Rumble and then he was the bodyguard for Shawn Michaels and turned on him and that is when he became Psycho Sid and like I said earlier he ended up going back to WCW and was there 
I think maybe close to the end, if not the end of WCW. And the famous promo, a lot of people kind of laugh and joke about. I have half the brain you two do. And he was actually the world champion at that match with Chris Benoit, which actually was Chris Benoit's last match in WCW. And going back to promos, there was that one famous one as well in WWF. He messed up and wanted to do it again and Jim Ross had to tell him we're live pal so that was Sid Vicious Sid Justice Psycho Sid Giant Humong or Lord Humongous I believe it was when he was working in Memphis I didn't mention Actually, but actually, when he was in Memphis, he worked with who now, of course, is known as The Undertaker, Mean Mark Callis. He definitely had a legendary career and definitely one of those recognizable, memorable pro wrestling characters. And he will be missed. Very unfortunate news. I remember one time. I was. Supposed to see him. At a primetime wrestling show. Here in Belleville, Michigan. At the Diamondback Saloon. But. I'm not quite sure what the reason actually was. But he. Ended up no showing. Which. There are famous stories about him missing wrestling shows in the past for softball games. But still, like I said, from me growing up, definitely a lot of great memories of Sid Vicious. He will definitely be missed in the world of pro wrestling. That's all for this Tuesday episode of 360 Good Morning Wrestling Fans. Thank you everyone for tuning in. In the comments section, you can leave your favorite Sid Vicious memories, your moments, your favorite matches, either right here on Spreaker YouTube or wherever you listen to 360 Wrestling Podcasts. If the website or app you listen to has a comment section, I'll be back tomorrow to preview tomorrow's AEW Dynamite with all the fallout from all in London. Hope all you can join me once again right here tomorrow. And until then, have a great pro wrestling day and rest in peace, Sid Vicious.